The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for The Trader's Edge. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Steve Rhodes. Uh, Steve's out for the day, and uh, I, it's my pleasure to be here. You know, he usually kicks off, well, he always kicks off the uh, TFNN programs here at, um, on the um, web. And don't forget, you can go straight to uh, the front page of TFNN, click on one of those three tabs, and you'll be able to see live the charts that we always post. So, uh, Basil Chapman, my service here is the opening call. Um, it's a daily service that goes through very comprehensive look at the markets, what we're looking for, um, the short, the near term, the short term, the intermediate term, the long term in different sectors. Uh, go through uh, different uh, commodities, whatever they are, that whatever is of interest, uh, of importance. And, of course, the Tiger Technicians Hour, 11 o'clock, I come in after Steve's show, two shows in the morning. I come in at 11 o'clock with my Tiger Technicians Hour. So uh, check it out, um, and uh, thank you for being here. Well, let's go straight to the markets. So what we're looking at here, if you're looking at these charts, let me just get this away. Well, let me just say that the concept of my uh, technique, the Chapman Wave methodology, is to find the lowest, most obvious low bar and then merely count each successively higher peak um, until you get to a D. When you get to that fourth highest peak, I'll letter them uh, alphabetically. Let me just show you here very quickly from my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. Um, from the lowest low bar, what you merely do is you follow the price as each bar makes a higher high bar. That becomes what I call a floating letter until you get to an A. If after that you get a lower high bar, now a lot of this is a lot of words, and you know, I, my eyes glaze over when a lot of, I hear a lot of words. I have to see pictures. So think of a mountain. So you're climbing up the mountain, but the moment you turn down, you've made a peak. doesn't matter how shallow, it's still a peak. And then you can go on to another uh, level. And that's exactly what happens. So this is called the floating letter. It stays, and then it becomes a peak A. goes from leg A to peak A. Pulls back, and you get these, I, go, I call them little A's over there. And the moment you go one penny, it doesn't matter whether you're looking at a chart that is at 14,443.00. If you go to 0 point, uh, 0 0.01, that starts the new leg to the upside. Now, what's really interesting about this particular chart, this is slide 93 of 476 slides, uh, about 27 chapters or something. Um, once you see, I, I figure that this diagram um, filters out all the noise. And look, it's leg A, pulls back one penny above that peak, starts leg B. It stays leg B until it makes a lower high bar. That becomes peak B. Even if it's just one bar, even if it's just a penny down and then goes to a new high, it is counted. And those of you who use the Chapman Wave, who use this methodology, really know how important one penny can be because you want to be in the right uh, letter on the way up. And then C, in this case, yeah, this is Deer Company from way back, tra tra tracking in the 40s. Pulls back, and the moment it breaks above peak C, it becomes leg D. D is where you can and very often get the deepest retracement. So that, in an essence, that's just the basis of, of the methodology. It is the core. And look here, we've just seen the same thing happen in the E-mini two-minute chart. Got to that peak D, it's pulling back, retesting the highs, making a cup formation. If, in fact, it pulls back after this, in, uh, this is the E-minis, below 1954, it should retest the 1953.25 level. If it takes that out, because the technicals, I use the technicals, the MACD, that's this green and uh, red, the, the two moving averages over here. And over at the bottom, the main two are... The green and the red is the slow stochastic. So let me just get this out the way, and I'll show you what happened in the – this is the, the latest move in bonds on the 120-minute chart. Goes to a peak D, pulling – oops, I should not have put that down arrow because I needed to have the price pull back under the nine-period moving average, that black line. And then you've got to have the slow stochastic go under 80%. It's at 85%. And you've got to get the uh, fast-moving average of the MACD below the red line. So using that methodology, let me show you where we are as far as I'm concerned in the uh, using this method methodology in the Chapman Wave. And we'll just run through um, we'll just run through all of the indexes that uh, that are key at this particular point. The Dow, I N D U. So what I do is there there are occasions. I'll just show you what I show my subscribers right here. I show this these five. 
uh, sectors over here, 120 minute Dow chart, made a peak E, one penny above um, 16923.43, starts an alternate wave F slash B. And that's the 120-minute chart of the VIX. It's plummeted from 12.87 to 10.57. This is going to be really important, this little cluster formation over the coming two sessions. And this is the Trin Index. I only use it for specific uh, purposes with the Chapman Wave. I use Richard Arms' Trin Index for my own gauge. I call it the Chapman Wave Trin Gauge. Yes, the Dow has not gone above 16,974, a breakout to all-time highs, but the S&P at 959 is dead. So this is going to be a very interesting couple of days. I also I didn't get to the 120-minute chart of my um, uh, for my subscribers this morning. I just had I did a lot of study charts, a lot of work for for the for my subscribers. I also include other things. I'll talk about that as we move along. But let's just get to the nitty gritties. So this is what I'm looking at here. See this beautiful channel that formed. It wasn't there until we made that peak G slash C. I have to call it a slash C now because there's a chance that we could go above 16,970 in the Dow, and that would start, can't be an, an H. There's no such thing as an H in the Chapman Wave methodology. It's like if you study music, you know you can only go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's no H. So it's, it's almost the same thing. And in fact, in music, you have your two quadrants, of those four notes, and here you get your quadrants because you've got the four notes that can recycle. When it gets to the second four notes, uh, it's recycled to a brand new A or, or uh, because you can't get higher than G. So it's very important. So if this breaks above, I have to call it leg D slash A because it could even be a brand new buy mode. I, I'm beginning to think that we are very close to some kind of a, a, a pullback. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, the parameters I'm watching are this, this maroon line, the nine-period moving average on this particular chart, at 16,481. A close below 16,800 without making a new high, say today or Monday, that would say, be careful, we're at least in for a bit of a consolidation. Now, with the Fed discussing, all, uh, uh, you know, the Fed has made it a big issue now about... Um, about inflation. Well, they've talked about inflation, but they seem to now have turned the, f the focus to say, we see no inflation at this particular point. That hasn't met our criteria. Well, that's the reason I, th I, I think it's one of the reasons why gold has taken off like that, saying, hey, you might see inflation before you really want to, and it might be sharper than you think, but we'll deal with that. That's not for right now. Meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is in the weekly chart of the Dow, if you go one penny above that 16,970.17. Today it extends leg D. If it doesn't do it today, it says you've made a peak D. The MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is okay. It's not great, but it's okay. You're still in the main trend that you've been in. The stochastics at 92% in the weekly, and that is really positive. I was expecting that this, at the end of this week, that would be Friday today at 4 o'clock, if there wasn't that big uh, Fed-induced spike to the upside, my thinking was we were starting to test the 16,800, and then 16,670s, the nine-period moving average in the weekly, would become some kind of a, a, a real test. So this could be um, a brazen move uh, to, to, to kind of support the market looking at other things, and we will find out this week if the rotation into other sectors is going to be able to stimulate another move to the upside. And I mean a move saying that the dailies have recycled to A and B and that we've still got at least another week and a half into June, uh, all of June, before we get a major pullback. Now, the uh, that's a 120-minute chart. Let me just move it away because I want to look at the bigger picture. And the monthly chart has just started to break above very important, very long-term uh, resistance track. And that says, watch out on the short side because we could start to move towards the 17,300, 17,700 level if that upside track in this channel that's formed becomes the focal point. And at this point, at this moment, with the um, MACD still okay but not great, I have to say, let the weekly and the daily charts tell us about the monthly, and the monthly isn't finished, so we can't really talk about it in great detail because we could talk about it to the, for the entire show, and all you need is one big move, 120 points, or 100, let's call it 170 points in one of the directions, 
and all that talking could be futile. So let's go to the, uh, the S&P, SPX.X. The S&P broke out. Now, the question will be, was this a Chapman Wave instant restart over there? Is this A and now B, or is this just a brand new A? Whatever it, oh, sorry, F slash A or F slash B. I don't know. I'm going to put it in here because I've got an alternate count. And I have to, had to put that down arrow in because the um, price closed, the, the S&P closed underneath the nine-period exponential moving average. But the MACD was flattish. It didn't open up the beta between what I call the fast moving average. It's really not. It's a nine-period differential. I call it because it's the quicker moving average, the green line over the slow moving average. That was very narrow, and it quickly went back. And that says you could make an M pattern with a residual flurry of activity to the upside before you come back to test that whole midpoint of 1938. Um, and right now, the S&P is at 1959. And that corresponded to what I was talking about in the Dow. Now, you've got a different count in the um, – in the. oh, this is very interesting. Um, A, B – um, 1883, 57, 1883, 97. So that is A, B, C, D, and we're in E in the weekly chart. That's the way I'm calling it for now. And in the, in the monthly chart, it's in leg D, and it has broken very long-term resistance. Now, when you're getting a rising wedge, if you break to the upside, that can give a, a big extension to the upside before it comes back to test that trend line that it broke. So... Monthly chart, not finished, uh, even the weekly yet. I'm only showing you the, the parameters. So I'll be back, and I'm going to show you the New York Stock Exchange, which, of course, is a very important index. As we go out, I'll just flash it there. And you know what? I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Steve Rhodes. My pleasure to be here. I'll also be back at 11 o'clock. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. 
The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Basil Chapman sitting in for Steve Rhodes. I'm the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour Come on, coming on at 11 o'clock till noon every day. Uh, yeah, that's market every market day, and that's a Eastern Time. And I'm going to go to our first caller. We have Ilka in Boston. Hi, Ilka. How are you? Well, Basil, wonderful. How are you? It's a beautiful, I, beautiful Friday in Boston. How can we complain? It is unbelievable. This is if we could bottle today, yeah, and, and just kind of take it out every once in a while in December, January, and February, and March, and April. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I would even for, trade that. Uh, if we could do that, I would trade for no long, no forever. I will never trade in my life if I could have a weather like this every day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Although right. this will be very, very difficult trade for me. <laughs> uh, how are you, Basil? I'm good. Thank you very much. How, how are, you, are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. Busy Wonderful. playing tennis again. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I need to do. Wonderful. So I, um, before we go to my uh, stock, I, I do want to say... Um, um, I really want to say thank you to you. Um, in the past few, since, la since our, our last class that I took with you, um, I have changed a lot of things in my trading. Um, I added a little bit, and the one thing I removed was my anticipations. So oh, very that good. really started helping me um, just clearing my mind. As well, I added uh, another chart. You know how you like one, 120 minutes? I've added yes. the five hours or four hours to my charts when I day trade, and that just helps me with the um, my decisions. I'm slowing down my trades a little bit because I'm seeing that bigger picture. And the five hours is a little bit less than a day, which sometimes helps. Uh, mostly in my future, in my e-minis, uh, it helps because then it goes a little bit longer. Uh, but with that, that actually, I've been long this whole time, and it's been really paying off. So it's been really, really great, and I really, really appreciate that uh, you've Place that in my head, and I know all your um, whoever is following your um, Chapman wave. I really um, I can I can't stress it enough how important are these classes because you are bringing something else than I just don't know of anybody else um, doing something like this because you 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 put music into traders' uh, minds, and I don't know if people understand that, but it's very very the technicals that you put in um, are so important in my trading that um, it's very successful, very successful, and thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I do appreciate that. Whoa, tears are welling up in my eyes. I do appreciate what you're saying, and I'm thrilled that it's working for you. So uh, that's great. So let's, let's talk about my stock. Um, and the other thing is I've been long because all these technicals, are so strong. I, there is just no reason for me to, to do anything. I'm being more cautious at certain levels, but, I, you know, that's the one thing that I'm confused because 
so many people are shorting, and I am just like, I'm, I, I have no reasons yet, so it's like interesting. So yeah, well, BRLI. So BRLI, which is, um, this Bio. is Bioreference Labs, one of those biotech, small bio, I guess a small biotech company. What do they, what do, they do, do you know? Uh, no, you? no, don't ever ask uh, me that, but I never know. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, this is a very interesting uh, a chart pattern. What I did is, uh, let me just fill it in from here. I haven't, I haven't seen this chart before, so let me put an A. I'm putting in a B. I'm putting in a C. I'm putting in a D, and then it goes to... A, B, C, another, and then it goes to an E. So this is a very interesting chart. And one of the reasons why I like to do the, in the, in the Chapman methodology, I like to take the time to um, basically see if this, this particular stock has a pattern that is sequential. In other words, does it consistently go to a D and then pull back, or maybe an yes. E and pull back? And what it did in the daily, in the monthly, in this very long-term look at it, it's gone from the low of 2008 in November at 9.18. It went all the way up to four peaks right there on, the, on May, the, May of 2010. It went to 24.66. Then it chopped around, held that black line, the nine-period moving average. It kind of walked it and then jumped up and went to a peak E. Uh, in May of 2011, a year later. Now, that's immediately in my mind. I keep saying, does this have a consistency of months? Does it, biotech stocks especially, and this is a very, actually it's a very nice looking chart because most of the time when you see biotech, especially the smaller companies, what you get are waves of moves that make a U-shaped pattern and you can always put it to either, they, these are, are, are stock or, or this is the way they pay their, their, um, their, the, the people that are working for them or their board of directors or whatever it is and then out of the blue you'll get either a news reference and then the stock flurries to the upside then they give uh, more stock to whoever it is and then it pulls back or it's a news event this one is a very nice pattern i would not have said it's a biotech stock so brli trading at 29.48 that's the stock we're going to look at when we get back with ilker in boston i'll be right back and then the market will have opened S&P futures are up five. I'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customer capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. 
The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Basil Chapman. Yes, sitting here for Steve Rhodes. The Dow's just opened. Oh, we're off! I forgot. Yes, Steve always has that. That's great. Oh, we're off to the races. So uh, the uh, Dow is up 27. The S&P is up uh, at 16,948. The S&P is up 262 at 1962. The Comp Index is up five at 4364. Gold, gold. Uh, the GLD is down 67 cents at 126.24. Gold itself is down two, uh, down three dollars at 13.11. High grade copper is still in the 3.05 area. We're going to watch that closely. Silver's up uh, 11 cents at 20.76. Bonds, bonds are down 13.30 seconds we're going to talk about that very shortly and we've got the dollar up 17 cents that's a very interesting uh player there the dollar held up well actually and uh we've got the euro i don't have the euro in front of me but i could get it right now eur usd um uh let's see euro is uh down just a tad um, hmm, this is going to be very interesting. Well, we'll talk about that in a little while because right now we have a caller from Boston. Of course, I'm from Newton, Mass., and we've got a caller just from the nearby. Um, we've got Ilka, and Ilka's looking at Bioreference Labs. And I've been speaking about the biotechs where they issue news. There are things that, that come out that have nothing very often to do with their patents or whatever they're working on. It has to do with the way they implement the news resources that they have, and that very often pops the stock, and then it pulls back quite sharply. This one has a much more orderly one, but I'm very, I have a question, and uh, Nilka's not going to be able to answer it, and the question's going to be, what was the news story? Because that's all it could have been on the 5th of June uh, when it went, and when it opens at 27.62, and Whoosh, it suddenly goes to 32.82, and now it's giving that back. So that's the question, and how it gives it back is going to be very important. It hasn't gone under the gap low, which is 27.50. It has pulled back. So, Ilka, you know how I always look. I, in fact, we spent at the last Master Trader Series, we spent quite some time talking about the spike up and the rectangle formation, the flag formation that comes after that. And mm -hmm. this one is close to um, is close to the um, in percentage terms it's not really close because the low so far has been 2879 and that gap is down at 2750 so but because of the way the stock moves um, it's held quite well up until now but unless it's able on a short term basis unless it's able to break 20 no the round number 30 high that it popped up to at 11.30 on the 17th, 
Mm -hmm. um, and it needs to do that real soon. There's a, there's a chance that it's going to take out the low of 28.79. And the reason being that there's a big question as to the spike that it had. Do you know what that was? No, no, I don't. And um, no, no. So I, don't, uh, I, I, I have no, yeah. So this is no a stock. Idea. Have you got a position in it? I do. I okay. am at, at this level, a little bit lower, but at my st I have made very nice time because I was actually in for that trade for that long move up. Uh, okay. And I, so I am very comfortable. I only have 300 shares. So this is not a, this is just something I'm paying for, play, playing for a D with the stop on the 27. I think 20, like just a little bit under 27. I'm playing my Elliott wave move as well. So it's my okay. Chapman Elliott wave uh, calculations that I'm saying. It says playing that here. it should go towards 33. Well, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this is the way I'm looking at it. And I've just got great, you know, the, the, the den is such a marvelous medium. We've got Peaky in the den who's telling me that um, uh, this is, um, let's see, Bioreference Laboratories, Inc. provides clinical laboratory testing services for the detection, diagnosis, evaluation, monitoring, and treatment of diseases primarily in the greater New York metropolitan area. Gee, only the de diseases in the New York metropolitan area? That was written well, a little enough. funny. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> so the company offers chemical diagnosis tests such as blood, urine analysis, blood. Okay, so that's to do with all the, uh, the hematolo hematological side of it and but it's only for the uh New York uh, metropolitan area. Uh, no, I'm just joking about that. And then the next thing he says is that it's got a 30% short interest. So that's in your favor. Now, I don't really care when I'm shorting stocks whether there is a high short interest or not. As long as the technicals are conforming to my, my particular uh, patterns. But I always mention that if there's a high short interest, your vulnerability is the speed of covering, and it's much quicker because there are more people that have to cover if it goes back up. So that's your risk. In this case, that's fantastic for you, and that's probably the reason why it spiked, because there was some news, and then there was shortcoming, and that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like a stock that was on its way up, had a sudden plethora of buying, had that spike, and now it's just trying to find its comfortability level. But on the other hand, all the, all the charts, the weekly, the monthly, and the daily will be impacted if it starts to break under 2763, which is the 200 period moving average, which will also be underneath the 27, oh no, it won't be, 2750. So between 2765 and 2750, that has to be the cushion. Because if mm -hmm. it takes that out, then it's that one of those buy tech stocks that it, you can see that a lot of the moves do have the move up. But the, flur the pullbacks are very orderly. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you, we've seen many others that just, they, they scream to the upside and then they make that pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower, like an like a, uh, uppercase A, it goes straight up and then straight back down to the base. And you don't want to see that here. So today's action is going to be very important. If today it's not able to close above yesterday's high of 29.63, but instead takes out 29.15, the low, then I'm going to say, just... On a short-term basis, be a little careful because it needs more time. My biggest concern would be if it took out 2750. Just to that say, that might stop anyway. So it, okay, at well, that that's, point, that's I not a care. problem. Mm -hmm. So, I, based on the 120-minute chart, um, funnily enough, it's very, it's not often you get the same patterns in the daily and the week, uh, the daily in the 120 minutes, but it's pretty much the same pattern. Mm -hmm. And it went to a peak C in the day in the 120-minute chart. It also went to a peak C in the daily so if a c becomes a c minus that usually says be careful because if it's mm -hmm. if it breaks below a certain level it could retest even the low which is down the 24th so i think you've got your eye on the prize but it needs to now prove itself because it's already given you one chance uh that spike to the 3282 level that has to come into focus and by tuesday i if later than tuesday it hasn't closed above 30.70, something like that, between 30.70 mm -hmm. and uh, 30, yeah, I'd say 30.60 to 30.80, really. I'd, up there in that register, make the U pattern. That's, then it would go into uh, the, the, the Chapman Wave inside buy mode. And that's really what you want to see in the 120-minute chart, that mm -hmm. from the low that was made uh, uh, on the 18th at 28.79, you've mm -hmm. now got, leg, you've got peak A, you want peak B above 29.63 to occur preferably today 
And as it starts to climb, it needs to clear 30, that round number 30 high. Yes, 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 yes. I, that, that is one of my, uh, that's when I will be moving my stops if I need to. Or I will see. I'm, I'm watching this. Um, and I'm also anticipating that the market may be moving down a little bit at this point, but not that much as maybe people anticipate. So we'll see. So we'll see how this, uh, plus my Facebook is offsetting this nicely. So very nice. good. No, thank you very, very much. This well, is wonderful. Thank you. And have a wonderful weekend. And it's great to hear from you, and uh, best of the family, so thank you for calling. I appreciate that. That's Ilke in Boston, and good luck with the trade. So let's get back to a couple of things here. So now I want you to do this. The Dow is up 19, S&P is 246 Very often, not very often, once in a while, in my, for my opening call subscribers, I will do a white light. Maybe it's a white lightning, not always, but sometimes it's what's called a white lightning uh, a trade. That's uh, options expiration Thursday and Friday. Friday is the options expiration. I wanted this morning to get the DIA 167 puts because I anticipated that there'd be maybe a little downside, then there'd be upside action, and then because they've squeezed the puts to, to the premiums have just come right out of the puts. Wouldn't it be a good time later in the day to suddenly have a, a little swoon to the downside? But the premium, I, the premium was just too high, so that wasn't a trade that I would have put it on. And um, even popping up now is not quite. I like to get the real bargain. I like to get them very low priced, so that you got minimal risk. You're throwing away three hundred dollars, but you have the potential to make. We've we've sometimes had two hundred percent, thousand percent, even with IBM puts uh, uh, in, in the same calls or puts. So um, I didn't do the trade, but that was my thinking. And the reason why I bring it up is I've had a number of calls from people or emails saying in their own work, they're also starting to see some kind of toppiness. Uh, Ilka just spoke about that. So let me do a couple of things here. Uh, I'm going to spend a moment because I do spend a lot. I, I've had a VIX. Um, I've used the VIX for years and years, decades, in fact, um, as a, a medium of gauging, um, most people call it fear and greed. I have no clue why they talk about fear and greed. I understand the fear part, but the greed part, you know, sometimes you're not being greedy. You've got a plan, and you don't want to break the plan. You want to stay in the position as long as you can. So I don't think that that's greed. That is just riding the wave as far as uh, possible. So I like to call it buying pressure and selling pressure. One of the things I was about to do this morning, I just didn't have the courage because we've done it a few times. You know, I wanted to buy the VIX on the long side because my thinking here, now let me go through this because I had a couple of questions whether I would have the time to do it. Um, in, in this particular instance, the volatility index on the... Um, now, let me just get this right. So there's A, B, C, D, E, pulls back, goes to, and this is a very unusual pattern. Then it goes to an F and a G. I didn't put that into my, into my uh, opening call correctly then. That should have been a G. Okay, I called it an F. So this G pulls back in the 120-minute in the chart of the volatility index from 12.89, and it slumps to today's low of 10 of 10.38 i'll talk about the historical uh, aspect as well one of the things i was looking at though is that the stochastic is really at the at the lows it's now nine percent but it in fact it was uh earlier on at the six point uh the vix uh, the the s and the oversold um, let me give it to you, 2.65 level. That is really over, and that's where you can get decent bounces. So I'm expecting that the volatility index is real close to making a, a bit of a pop-up. Nothing's going to happen unless it gets to 10.95 or higher, that nine-period moving average. This is only trough A, B, C. So uh, on the downside, it can abort uh, early. And, and what's important about this is that a lot of people have been saying, oh, the volatility index is now, it's out of fashion. There are too many other things going on. Uh, it's not relevant, uh, et cetera. I tend to say no, 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 no. You've got to be very careful when you say that because that means that you've um, abdicated from human, human, humans' uh, 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 emotions, 
come on, people are always going to get nervous. That VIX will fly at some point to the upside. Right now, the breakdown is the most unusual breakdown in the time frame because normally it doesn't go more than 8 to 12 bars in the weekly chart to the downside before there's a really nice um, uh, rally to the upside. But the candle that's forming on the weekly right now, I'm going to talk about that in my, uh, in my show at 11 o'clock. I want to see what happens a little later on. I want to give it another hour or so. Go straight after this. You've got uh, t uh, Tom and uh, Daryl, uh, and uh, this is going to be a very interesting. This is the Nadex platform that they use. So that, that, that hour is coming up. Uh, it'll give me a little chance to look at other things. Uh, also, I probably, for my subscribers to my opening call, I'm going to have a lot more to say about this particular candle in the weekly. Uh, chart of the VIX index and what the implications are if certain parameters are taken out, upside and downside, and what that particular candle means in my work. But you see, even in the volatility index monthly from the, the from the December 2006 9.39 low, if you're looking at Tiger TV, this is the monthly chart right here. It went to a peak A, B, C, and then that big bank crisis spiked to 89.53 in October of 2008. That wasn't the lows in the, in, the, in, the, in the general market, but that was the emotional low. Now, there, it, I, there's no question that is buying pressure, but I, I, I don't mind if people at that point call it fear, but to call it a fear index and then say, oh, it's out of fashion, it's, this is it, it's done. No, no, no. Just when those words are said, um, I say to myself, hey, folks, you're looking at the wrong thing. You've got the wrong assessment of what indicators are supposed to do. Indicators can go out of fashion in volume because other, like the XMI is hardly ever used. The XMI, for me, is the most valuable tool because it's a mix of 20 stocks, I think it is, um, but it's a mix of uh, um, conservative stocks, that is uh, defensive type, not defense, but defensive type stocks, and it's a mix of, so this is an E actually, E in the weekly, maybe a peak E if there's no new high today, and a nice rebound in the um, monthly, but it hasn't broken the peak D top, and that used to be a, well, I used to trade on options all the time, um, a long time ago, but nobody even talks about it anymore, it just went out of fashion. So that doesn't mean to say it doesn't work. Of course it works, but it's just not where the volume or the focus is. So remember, you've got to be real careful about talking about these things. So we've got a, a break coming up now. I'll be back for this final segment, and then I'll be doing my show in an hour and 10 minutes, whatever it is, at 11 o'clock Eastern. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take 
take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex, up next on TFNN. I, I, I highly advise you to uh, listen to the Bull Bear uh, Binary Hour coming up next. It's just a fabulous show with Tom and Daryl. Uh, great techniques discussed and uh, just uh, all around uh, educational treat. So um, let's do a couple of things here because this is the final few minutes. I'm going to do this. Um, I'm just going to give you parameters that I'd be looking for in the near term. Uh, as far as the Dow is concerned, if there is a new high today above 16,970.17 by one penny even, it extends leg D. If, in fact, it cannot get, the Dow cannot break to a new high, you've made a peak D here, and a lot will depend on whether... Um, yeah, we're looking at this. Whether or not this is a rectangle formation that says, be careful because you can stay in the rectangle formation for quite a while, just bouncing around between, in this case, 16,700, 16,900. Or if there is a power move by Tuesday, uh, a few days in a time, and that power move takes the down to the 17,070s. If it can hold 17,000 as a base, for all of next week, because it's broke after it does that, or the rest of the week, if it does that, that would say two things are happening. That the Fed, in fact, is succeeding in trying to get more and more people into the stock market, which is what I think they want. And the other thing is that the, there's a chance that instead of having a pretty decent time and price pullback now to, to, to go into the next up phase, we go into hyper phase right now. Now, a lot of people have suddenly sp are speaking about that. I've been speaking about that potential in the market, not time-wise, but going into 2015 for a very long time. There's a whole thing I do with skyscrapers that I talk about, and I'll probably do it in the next hour when I get some things ready. But basically what we're looking at here is this the moment that, the, that, that bonds start to pull back and that money starts to flow into stocks or isn't it? And the, I, I said to my subscribers this morning, there are only two things, I've been saying it for a long time, that really concern this particular market. And that is bad news. To sustain a down move, you have to have 
constant bad news and the media chooses not to choose on anything that they think is very bad at this particular point. There are a lot of reasons for that. I don't want to get into it. But at the same time, it is the volatility index. So if that VIX finally at some point, instead of breaking down, um, and that candle is what I'm waiting for. By the end of the day, you're looking at the weekly candle. But if instead of breaking down, the volatility index breaks, it, it's at 10.46. You would need it to go, and I, now I don't know what it'll take to get into the 13s because that's a big move from the from just about 13 down to, to late, today's low of 10.62. But if there is bad news, it'll be coming from a, just out of the blue. It'll be overnight. Something's going to happen. And then things start to move very quickly. And 13.82 is the nine-period exponential moving average, and the VIX has not been able to close above it since it broke down back on the 16th of April. So that entire area going to 17.85, that is the upside potential for a more sustained move to the downside. But nothing will happen until the VIX goes into the mid-13s and then has lower high higher lows and higher highs, and bad news, two things, bad news and volatility index. Without it, that's the reason why you're seeing the VIX constantly pulling back because the, the buying pressure in the VIX is not there. It's more, and it might not even be selling pressure. It's just lack of wanting to, to sell because we're so afraid of having missed this big move to the upside that, but I say no. Don't be afraid if you feel that your technicals are saying this is the time to short. Just put in a tight stop. Treat it like anything else. You put in your tight stop, and we, you know, I, I do that, and I don't see any reason why one shouldn't have that capacity. Meantime, back at the ranch, very important session for the week. Let's see what happens, and I'll be back at 11 o'clock with my show, the the, the Tiger Technicians Hour. Stay tuned. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.